we are going to be recording. I'm Jennifer. I work with grades 9 through 12 here in Benville Schools, and um, we're excited today to introduce you to some friends that we found at an ACT conference. Um, sometimes we go off and um, we try to learn things and we try to bring some of the speakers um, back, but one of the things we're doing now is we have started a parent university page on our website and we're putting some recordings there. So we have a great recording that we made the other day about free resources for test prep, free resources for study prep. Um, we have a young man who's working on the Perfect 36 on his ACT. And so he um, is using some of these free resources we have instead of paying to go down to the corner to the strip mall to <coughs> get your math assistance or whatever. We have our top 10 free resources that we can share with you. So that's a 30 minute recording. I think that we've got on our website now. And this is the second recording we're gonna put up there. And I wanna tell you a little bit about our friends. So we found them, um, the ACT conference for our region was in Oklahoma. So they work for the Oklahoma Regents and some of the things embedded in their presentation originally were uh, Oklahoma centric resources. But we have a book here for you before you leave today with some Arkansas-centric um, resources. But um, I've been telling my staff um, they're, they're identical twins. And then my staff got here and met them today and came up and said, they're identical twins. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they still are. Um, and um, they actually have names that rhyme, hey and gay, but they go back, hey and Susan. Um, and for some reason, their married names rhyme too. It's Falk and Walk, and um, a lot of their work history has been in the same places. But if you know Oklahoma, they're from Shawnee, Oklahoma. They're going to tell you great um, stories. Um, it's, it's the real-life version of all of this. And they have been busy putting seven children, their two families, putting seven children through college. And um, they're going to tell you the, the good and bad of that. One, they've done some college basketball and, and they understand that piece of it with scholarships, but they also have, um, one of them has a, a student graduating from medical school, and they'll tell you how much debt that will be when she graduates this year. Um, so they have a great perspective. I hope you love them, and I hope it helps us when we want to put this online for other families. So I'll share some of these real quick while they get started. Well, well uh, we're going to stay close up here for the video and the microphone. And we're going to try to not talk over each other because they said that's not good for the microphone, but we probably will slip up on that. We'll switch back and forth on some of the slides of what our, we consider our uh, expertise areas and we'll let you know what that is. And we are going to try to approach this as first, we were, pa we're parents who've done this and we've made the mistakes and we try to share that with you. But we've also been in the education business for over 35 years, getting close to 40. We've both been teachers. I was a school, uh, high school uh, counselor. Uh, we were both college basketball coaches and taught college classes. So we've interacted with kids who have scholarships, who don't have scholarships. Um, and now we're working for the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education. And we both go out and educate Oklahomans across the board from grade school through businesses anybody on uh, the FAFSA for one, uh, but just paying for college. And she actually works with, a, uh, I'll let her tell you about it in a minute, but about uh, budgeting and uh, managing personal finances. So we're, we're gonna bring quite a bit to the table and there is a lot of information here, a lot of websites, and we're going to provide a PDF of this presentation besides the video. So if you want to access it and uh, click links, you can. I'm not sure how Jennifer will uh, distribute that, but we will have that. So you don't have to write down every single email or uh, web address. So my name is Kay, this is Susan. And what we're going to be talking about today is paying for a post high school education. We'll mention, we'll say college, but this can, work a lot of ways, whether you're going into uh, uh, a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A tech college, yeah. Or, or a certification program or career tech. A lot of the same things apply. Right. All of it costs money in some way or another. Right. Uh, the five essential rules that we're going to be covering is starting the conversation early, doing your research, calculating what we can, can we afford, 
Uh, we're going to dive into a few special populations where there may be other monies available and then finishing up and how you get put all that together to make good decisions. Oh, there's our choices. We forgot we had to push it twice to get that picture. Uh, this is a new, something we found at the beginning of this year uh, and kind of uh, where we start, we start this presentation is that, you know, a lot of people have some things to say about getting a college education. It's not worth it, but the research doesn't show that. Statistics don't show that. Uh, is if you get a bachelor's degree and you go into the workforce, you're going to make more money than people who don't in general. Now, we know there's jobs out there where you can make more money, but it's a good path. And our kids show that that's definitely something that will help you make it in the economics of our world. So I'm going to let Susan take over here. And I'm going to try not to go off track here because we do have a few more slides uh, that we've added for Arkansas specific things. So I'm going to try not to talk over myself too much because I tend to try to put more in than we have time for. Uh, but one of the things that we discovered as we worked the last couple of years with families uh, planning and preparing for paying for post-secondary <coughs> education and uh, talking to students, because I talk primarily to high school students, that what we were presenting ab about how you planned and prepared for that, what was going to happen was old. Our information was old, and what really needed to happen, we had to change our conversation, what we were telling people, because it, it's an old model. What you did 10 years ago to prepare for this is not what you do now. Um, and a lot of it has changed uh, because of the economy, how expensive post-secondary education has become. It's just become more and more expensive. And the student loan crisis. It's all kind of a perfect storm of we've got to change something because something's not working. So we put our heads together with the people that we work with and said, what is it that has to change? Why isn't it working? And one of the things that I noticed was that uh, parents and students didn't talk about what they were going to do until the month before they graduated, or it, it wasn't a pre-planned idea. And that's one of the things that we know you have to do. You have to start the conversation early. Uh, and that just means talking, because I've talked to so many seniors three months before they graduate, and they haven't talked to their parents about anything like what what they're gonna where they're gonna go what they're gonna do how they're gonna pay for everything and that's one thing that i tell them go home today and ask your parents have you saved any money for for my schooling uh are you still gonna pay for my cell phone uh do you expect me to have a job while i get my post-secondary education are you gonna pay for my car insurance or my gas you have to know all these these things because they all cost money and if you don't know you can't plan, prepare, and make sure that they get through college. Because if any of those things fall through, they'll have to quit. And a lot of the times it's because of money. And one thing that we learned, uh, we kind of look back at our history, is when we graduated from high school, our parents grew up in the 50s. We really and truly did not know when we left for college that we weren't coming back. We weren't, well, it wasn't that we weren't welcome back home. But that old school is we are 18 years old. Once you turn 18, you're on your own, buddy. I didn't know that. I had no idea that when I left home that I was on my own. I had to pay for my insurance. My, I had to pay for everything. And back in the day, you could do that. I'm 62 years old. I was able to have a little job at a Gibson's department store making minimum wage. And I had a I mean, I didn't get any money from my parents, but I had a car, I had insurance, I lived somewhere, I fed myself, I did all those things. That's not true anymore. That's not going to happen. My kids can't do that. I'm, I've got three that are just now finishing college, and I still pay for some stuff. I still do. It's just, you just can't go work at a minimum wage job anymore and live outside the home and pay for everything not possible. 
Uh, and so we encourage parents as the very first step is to start those conversations early. Ninth grade is not too early already. How are we going to pay for this? Have we started savings? What are we going to expect our children to contribute? And if anything, and you know, how will it take place? Get detailed about it. Don't leave it this ephemeral thing that you, you don't know about. And one of the things that I've discovered talking with high school students across the state of Oklahoma is they don't, it's difficult. They do. I know that Arkansas has the um, program that prepares students to the success plan, success plan where they're working all through school to learn what their strengths are, what their aptitudes and, and personalities, what they're going to be good at working at, how, how making goals about what they want to do after school. They're doing that. But a lot of students don't take it seriously. And if you can talk to them about that and say, what is your plan? What are you saying you're good at? What is it that you think you want to do as a career? That will help it make, real, make it real for them. Because Oklahoma students, it isn't real. You know, it's something they're doing in class. They don't really think about it. They don't see that it has impact on their life yet because they haven't, the rubber hasn't hit the road yet. So we want to make sure that they understand that, that we are preparing them to be independent human beings who pay their way. Yes, we're preparing them for critical thinking and being empathetic and all those things too, but we are preparing them to be independent human beings. And they don't often make that a lot of times they haven't made that connection that that's what I'm preparing for. Um, so how can you do that? Uh, if your counselors, like some of you are in the room, encourage your students and parents to have real conversations about these things and start it early. Be specific. Come up with direct questions, not, oh, yeah, I'm going to go to college. It's not good enough. You need to start planning. They don't have to make solid decisions yet. We'll talk about that later. Uh, and discuss the realities of student debt and student loan. In uh, this booklet, there's some really good information about student loans and how much you can borrow, how much students can borrow, and information about student loans. Um, and then there's also, because I'm the finance uh, person in, in our office and I go across the state talking about budgeting and personal finance, there's a great, uh, Arkansas has a great tool um, called the AR Finance Future Wellness Initiative. And there are actual classes that you can go in there and take basic classes, basic um, courses that teach you about finance. And they're, and they're good for, uh, I think it was uh, sixth grade through 12th grade or, or young adult. Uh, and I would use that because so many students have no idea. <laughs> and I ask how many students budget Maybe one out of every class does, maybe. There we go. And since you looked at this one, do you want to? Okay. Yes, and this is the some of the things that you can learn about on the website where you can find me. And in this book booklet, it talks about saving for college, college planning checklist. There's some good resources there on both of these. So the um, is this one you do? Okay. So uh, doing the research, that's another thing that we're asking students to be specific about and start that conversation early is what specific work do I want to do? Not just I want to be a scientist uh, is finding a specific job. What classes start thinking about what classes am I going to need to make that happen? What degree do I need? What training do I need? How much money will I make? And we hate to focus on that, but that's a reality. Uh, what have I done to prepare? Uh, during school, there's lots of things that students can begin doing to get themselves where they want to be in that job. Uh, the Arkansas Student Success Plan is a great place to start. That, that she talked about. Uh, making sure your students have a, are taking classes that are preparing them for college taking AP courses, if they make sense for you. Um, my daughter who became a doctor, she took AP biology. That was good, but when you're becoming a doctor, the biology everyone takes is not the biology you need to take. 
So when you're thinking ahead about what kind of work you want to do, make sure the AP courses you're taking are the ones that are going to get you where you need to be. It was a good course for her to take, the AP biology, but it didn't suffice for medical school. Uh, concurrent classes, those are great. They, our daughter saved a lot, we saved a lot of money taking concurrent classes. And uh, like Oklahoma, Arkansas does, is I think pay for two classes a semester. Just think about how much it costs to take a college class and being able to do that for free now. It's a huge savings. And taking as many as you can is better for everybody. Uh, I know internships are part of your uh, student success plan. Those are great. All of my daughters did internships. Uh, we didn't do them through their schools. That was not part of their school. But I knew as a high school counselor how important that is, especially if you're going to medical school. My daughter or if you not, want to be a teacher. Yeah. My daughter did not start doing hers early enough. Uh, she was already into her third or fourth year before she started thinking about internships and she was actually behind. So the sooner you can get out into, if you're gonna be a doctor into the medical field, the better. Um, I, I have a younger daughter that's in, uh, her degree is in communications and she worked for a local company that made a local guy who made small movies and she would follow them around and help him with his email and his communications. And so all those things are very helpful. And then of course, taking the ACT and SAT. And it's, if you're going into the medical field or someplace that requires those high scores, my daughter that's a doctor uh, or will be in September for real. She's already called Dr. Walk. Um, she took the ACT six times, but she's a perfectionist. And you get a plaque on the wall at her school if you score 30. So she started off with a 26 and she took it as many times as she, she studied. She took college classes to help her. She knew where she wasn't scored a bit. She took classes so she could improve that ACT score in that particular area. Not a lot of kids are like that, but she is. So as you're looking at strategies to do that research of what you're gonna do and how you're going to do it, student success plan, great place to start. This Discover Arkansas uh, is a good one, and I've got some things listed there. I'm not going to go over these in depth because I have some slides for them, but these are some places where you can look. The Arkansas Division of Higher Education has some great resources. Uh, the Student Success Plan, all the things that we've been talking about, awareness, exposure, exploration, even in the lower grades, your, your state has that set up for you, or Bentonville School District has that set up for you. So it guides students along, uh, and it has college and career components. So really take advantage of that, because every state does not have that. You guys are very lucky that this is in your state, and in Bentonville Schools. Um, and they ha I noticed on the uh, career planning, they have internships as part of that. You're lucky there too. Like I say, my kid's school did not have anything on internships. Uh, the Scott College Scorecard is a website that uh, helps you find the right place to go to college according to what it is that you're wanting to do. And they have lots of options for you. Plus, they give you more information. They have FAFSA information. I'm just going to show you on the next slide. I did a search. Uh, up there at the top, it gives you a place to search, and I just put in Arkansas University, and it will give you a list of all the of several universities, and you can drill down and find more information. But it has graduation rates, how much it costs to go there, and the median earnings for students who graduate from that college, and you can see the vast difference there. You know, and if I put in uh, University of Arkansas for Medical Science their average salary is 71,000. Um, if why, you're- Why is there cost zero or NA? Um, that probably something they don't provide to this website, because I'm sure all the colleges provide this information. But this is a good place to go look just for some, a broad view, and then you can drill down and find out more information. So this is just one of the websites you can find that information. Oops. 
uh, I went to the, uh, I tried to find some of the same information for Arkansas because I know where to go look for it in Oklahoma. And these are some places that I found. The Arkansas Workforce Services, they have an economic security report and a higher education planning guide. Uh, they have the Arkansas Hot 45 demand op occupations of where people, where Arkansas is going to need people to work. Uh, they have the 2023-24 projected employment opportunities list. So when you're trying to get specific with your kids and your kid says, well, I want to make $75,000 a year and I want to live in a nice house. Well, you've got to get a job that does that. This is the kind of places you can go look to find that information. Uh, this is that the Hot 45 demand occupations. It has the occupations, the uh, skills that you need. And then I like that little education column because it says you need high school education. Uh, I think it's no, that MPE is like you don't need a higher education. It's got B for bachelor's degree, A for associates. So that's kind of a nice thing too. And it gives you a, the median wage for that particular job in Arkansas, which is yes. important to, yes. This is another Discover Arkansas, uh, that Discover Arkansas place has a projected employment opportunities list, average weekly raise, uh, wages, career resources, education and training programs. And you just kind of have to click a lot around on those websites. It wasn't particularly easy to find, but I got there going to that Discover Arkansas way, uh, website. The Arkansas Division of Higher Education has some really great uh, Explore Arkansas careers. If you like the way this looks and it's easier for you to read, they have uh, that website will take you to some places to see some different uh, careers. So with number two, you're going to do that research and really try to get to a place where you're figuring out exactly what it is they want to do and how much money they're going to make and what degree they need. And then you can move forward to the next step, which is calculating what can I afford. So to recap, you've had, you started having conversations, you started doing real research with details about what it is they want to do and how they want to get there. How am I going to get there? What is it I want to do? How am I going to get there? How are we going to pay for it? Uh, and we'll get more detailed as we go along. And uh, in the past, uh, one of the things when we were in school, probably when y'all were getting careers, they said, you know, what's your dream school? What's your dream job? That's where the conversation started. And now that is not how the conversation starts. And we saw this uh, quote uh, with a another um, College Money Matters. It's another, uh, it's a, for profit website, but they have really good basic information. And we found this quote there in choosing a college. Our advice and new advice, and I've seen it all over the place now, is that you consider what the family can afford first instead of starting with dream schools. Because it's a lot of times the dream school is not even a possibility. So you need to know that up front. Doesn't mean they can't get a great education, doesn't mean that they can't find a place they want to be and something they want to do but that's a hard thing for americans to wrap their mind around because it's always what's the dream what's the dream it's just not it's not viable anymore you have to think about what you can afford because otherwise you're going to be one of the student loan people can't pay off their student loans we have a college professor from st gregory's who put on facebook about six months ago he was going to die paying off his student loans die and uh he was not doing well <laughs> at that point in time. He was very depressed. And we don't want our children to be one of those. You know, you have to be smart. You have to be so smart these days. And the reason he was still paying off student loans is because he wanted to be an environmental scientist. And he liked going outside and getting in ponds and finding algae. And he went to St. Gregory's University, which is a small private Catholic Oklahoma college to teach. Didn't make very much money. I worked there. But he got to really dive into being an environmentalist and teaching. And, and oh, he was having so much fun. He would go back to college whenever he was in college. He had his PhD because he loved learning. Well, he kept borrowing money. 
So he had the job he loved. And he was getting to do all these things. But now here he's a 64 year old man still with student debt because he couldn't, he made choices that kept him from succeeding in life to do what he loved. And now that's, you can get yourself in real trouble doing that now. We're not saying you can't go to Harvard and Yale. That's not what we're saying. My daughter became a doctor. Uh, we couldn't afford the $500,000 loans that she has right now. And just so you know, she did her um, clinical rotation in New York City. She did that on purpose. So it cost her twice as much that year to live and to do everything and to travel that it would a student who stayed in state. So she made some choices that were expensive, more expensive, but her loans right now are five, at least $500,000 to become a doctor. So you got to really, really want to be a doctor to go there. And so you've had the conversation, you've talked about details about what I want to do. Now, as early as you possibly can, start calculating how much it's going to be for your ninth grader who wants to be I want to be a veterinarian. They might change their mind, but you need to know how much money you need to start talking back and how much money they need to start earning when they get a job and how much money y'all need to save if they want to go to a particular school. When, and you can check several schools out. How much is it going to cost for us to do that? How much can, can we afford? And put real numbers to it. We're going to show some uh, resources here in a minute that are going to make it easier for you to put those real numbers in there. It's not going to take it's a you know impossible work to figure this out how much money do we have how much is it going to cost them how much financial aid might they get how much savings do we have how much does that scholarships does that college usually have for incoming freshmen you can figure a lot of those things out how much you know are they going to get a Pell, full Pell Grant you know do we have if we don't make a lot of money they might get a full Pell Grant you'll be able to figure that out and write it all down and you're going to write it all down <laughs> as early as you possibly can. So you have a real idea. I think that's the thing that I was so shocked about is parents really didn't have a good idea of what the, you know, oh yeah, it's going to be expensive. We're going to have to borrow money. Well, how much? You know, you need to know that early. Know it early uh, so that you can prepare for it. And if you can't make the, you know, the, the first choice happen, well, let's figure out how we can make something happen. Something that's close to what they want. How can, can we switch a few things around? Can they get a second job? Do I need to get a second job? Do I need to plan on borrowing more? Whatever it is, you need to figure it out as early as you possibly can. And we're not saying all this to scare people. It's because we know people aren't preparing. They're not ready for this. They haven't looked ahead far enough to make sure that they can make it possible. Because you want to make it possible if you can. We know my kids are doing what they love. I had two boys who went to uh, uh, technical college, Navarro, and uh, the Pimp My Ride one in, in uh, Wyoming, Wyotech. And they, they're both doing things that they love. And uh, my daughter is in banking and in marketing, and she loves her job. So we want them to be able to do what they need to do, but we also have to make it so they're not owing money for the rest of their life on their student loans. And we aren't either, because. And our, my husband and I learned a really hard lesson. Mm -hmm. We grew up back in the day, you know, we were, we were older parents. My husband's 70 years old now, and he's, you know, just graduating kids from college. And we didn't prepare, you know, because when I, we went to school, I got a basketball scholarship, and I worked at the minimum wage job. I did just fine. Well, we didn't prepare. And we sent three girls to college in this day and age within the last eight years, we didn't save a penny. We didn't put any money aside. When they walked on campus, it wasn't even a week before. It was when they walked on campus, we thought, oh, they didn't have the money to pay for textbooks. And then we went, oh, well, I guess I'm going to have to give her my credit card. She didn't have any money. I mean, and we worked in colleges. I mean, he was the vice president of, of a community college. I was a college basketball coach. You would think that we would have prepared, but we just hadn't thought that way because whenever we grew up the college advice was you can be anything you want to be that was my career advice that i got nobody ever said any of this to me and so that was how i moved forward 
Uh, I hadn't been a high school counselor yet then, you know, uh, but we were really caught unawares and we're still in debt because of that. And that's, that's the change that we're seeing and why we, we speak to Oklahoma uh, families about this, because that's the way everybody's still thinking, probably than what you were thinking. And it's just got to change. It just has to. Uh, so now you're going to calculate how much money do I have? What is it they want to be? Can we afford it? And then start, then you can start planning. And I love because everybody has younger children in here. You have time to make a little bit of plans. <clears throat> and then one thing that I talked to high school students about, and this was never, I don't even know if y'all have heard this, return on investment, is what I've decided to do a good idea. Am I going to make what I'm borrowing and what I'm putting forward, uh, paying up front for this degree or this training or whatever, and how much money I'm going to make pay off in the long run? Is it going to be worth what I put into it? You have to think about that. And we'll have some res resources here in a minute that will show you that there was a school in Oklahoma if you became a communications um, uh, tech in one college, that it was a negative $100,000 over your lifetime that the, re the return was, negative. And it wasn't an expensive degree. And I was going, holy, no one ever told us to look at that. You know, is it going to be worth Randy's while to be a doctor? You know, in, in the long run, is that investment worthwhile? And we'll show you. So you can show kids that, you know, yeah, I know you want to be the music director at the church. But if you get a degree for music at a private college, you're never going to make your money back that we spent on this degree. Is that smart? No, not in this day and age. You can still get a music degree and you can still work at the church, but let's do it in a way that it's not going to put you in debt the rest of your life or us. Um, and we'll look at how they can see how much they're going to make their first year of work so they don't borrow more than that over the course of their education. That's a rule of thumb. Now, if you're a doctor and you're borrowing over half a million dollars, of course, that's not a good rule of thumb. But for most other people, that's a good way to think about it. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't make sense over your lifetime. And again, if affordability comes into it, I want to be the music director at my church when I graduate. This is what I want to do. And you can't afford to go to the school that you want to go to. Well, let's find a workable strategy. Let's look at some other schools. You know, maybe you have to work this summer. And maybe you have to, and I tell students this too. I have students that I that want to do their, they really want to do it. They can't afford it. They may not go to college the first year after high school. They might have to work a year and earn some money first before they do that or work while they're in school more than they thought they were going to have to. But you got to find a strategy that works. And one of the things, and I saw this with Suze Orban. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Suze Orban. But I read an article that it was saying all the things were, that we were saying for the last year. I love when you see that, whenever somebody that, you know, does finances repeats what you've been repeating, what you've been saying, and you go, yes, we were right. Um, but one of the things she talked about was making it a family decision. You don't put the whole family in debt and in a critical situation to educate children. That's not, and I know some families and some cultures, that's, it goes against all of it, but it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't, it's not going to help them. They're going to have to help you when you get old if you do that. So, you know, don't go into debt to educate your children. Not a debt that you can't recover from and that you have a plan for it and that you know you can take care of. Um, and she had all of these things. Opting for affordability is not a compromise. They can still get a great education, still get a great experience. Uh, the things that she said you should be looking out for is big financial strain and scaling back a lot to send some up tips to send your call, child to college. Don't do it. Um, large parent loans. And it's always better for students tomorrow. Like I said, we have a deal on student loans there in that book that tells what they can borrow and what you can do. Right. And one thing that uh, we did point out on the first couple of slides, but I know kids want to go to their dream school and they want to go to this university and that university. But what research shows is that 
wherever a student goes to school, what they put into it is what they're going to get out of it. Whether they go to, in Oklahoma, the University of Oklahoma, or they go to Seminole State College, a local community college. My girls all went to community college first. My doctor went to community college first. And it didn't put her over. She didn't have to go extra years. She's a very, what's she going to be, 20 six twenty seven when she starts being a doctor it didn't take her more time she did just fine and she went to community college first for her first two years you know, much more affordable but she had a great time at that community college all my girls went to the same one they had fun they went to games they did all kinds of stuff they had good professors they had good classes so it doesn't put you behind and what you put into that college experience is what you're going to get out if you're going to be a sorry student and not have any fun at college you're going to do that wherever you go. And you could, you could still go to the Razorback football games and not go to college. Yeah. You know, you could still have experiences and not go to a college that costs more if you want to go to community and go to community college the first two years. So what I'm going to show you now is some ways to do that calculation that we were talking about earlier. And I've got several of them and I know some people have different ways of learning. So, We've got some different ones that may make more, make more sense to you and to your student. The first one is my FICO, and this you basically get a chart. So if you have a visual learner or you're a visual person, it will give you this chart. And it says, how much should I budget for college living expenses? And it helps you to budget for the living expenses of one year of college. And it has you, you see down there, it's got education costs, communication costs, personal costs transportation and all of those pull down where you can mm -hmm. fill in some information. And, and just, and just uh, before mm -hmm. I forget it, one of the things I talked to a uh, TRIO program or support programs in colleges uh, for students who are usually first generation students and they provide a lot of support. They normally get full Pell money. That means their parents are on the lower end of um, uh, salary ranges. So they get more support and grants from their FAFSA. And uh, the head of Roger State University said the most heartbreaking thing is when students do everything right. And this, this is when it really like hit home to me. They got their FAFSA done. They knew how much they were going to get. They did the FAFSA estimator. They knew how much uh, money they were going to receive. Uh, they were working. Uh, they made uh, plans to pay for their textbooks. And the freshmen, he said, so many freshmen, they get the second semester they have to leave because they still can't afford it because they didn't plan on the food. They were going out to eat with friends. They didn't plan on gas. They didn't plan on toilet paper. They didn't plan on breaking their uh, cell phone screen. And he said that everything costs so much now. Everything costs so much that you, can, you have to have all those things planned out. So all those personal costs, that's the part that people are missing. They're not planning all of it. And even if you, if you can pay all of their money, if you can pay for all their tuition and all their housing, they still have to have money. And it's a lot. So you have to plan for every penny. Uh, this one is from Bankrate. And this is the one I like. This makes sense to me. And the first time I did this uh, presentation, I didn't fill in the the amounts, but I pretended I was my daughter and I knew how much money I had paid for her to go to college and she was my baby and she was by far the most expensive one. You know how to do with your baby. Um, and I filled in the, there's a pull down menu down below that you can't see on here where you can add food and groceries and living expenses and clothing for her and uh, personal toiletries, which is very expensive for this very beautiful high maintenance girl uh, and i filled in how much i thought it would cost you know how much i spent while she was at the university of oklahoma living in a house on campus in a rental house and this is my dad my husband's baby too so she did whatever she wants and as you can see up there at the end of the year your budget may be eleven thousand four hundred dollars short now that wasn't this wasn't specific and i probably hiked the prices up a little bit but that doesn't surprise me because that's how short we were of paying for this girl. So figuring out all, if we had done that in advance, 
I don't know what we'd have done differently because we only have a fine out amount of money, but we may not ever go to the University of Oklahoma and live in a house off campus and have internet and free hair and all of that. Another one that you can uh, look at is uh, freeop.org. Uh, and this one is another, uh, this is an actual return on this investment. This is the one I was talking about a while ago. Yeah. And I put in University of Arkansas on this one. And it tells you, if you have this degree, this is how much you'll be earning on average at the age of 25, at 45. And then it has before completion adjustment. And I read about these different adjustments. They have to do with paying for the college, uh, paying for loans. So it makes some adjustments in the different uh, things that you have to pay for. And then it gives you a final number of each year. This is what you could expect to make and what your return on investment is. And you see there is a minus one right there. Applied so horticulture minus. <laughs> and horticulture business services. And this is something to look at. Now, if your person wants to, your student wants to be a horticulturist, well then you need to do some better planning and maybe find a different way to engage this love of yours. But this is, uh, this is a pretty good, and the guy who did the research on this really did a lot. He didn't just go in there and take some numbers out of thin air. He did some pretty good research to get these numbers. Another one is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, this one uh, is specifically talking about how to understand your financial aid offer, your plan to recover the remaining cost estimate how much you'll owe if you can afford that debt. So all the things that we've been talking about, and it's just, a, it has a little different way of going about it and putting in information. It allows you to compare offers from different schools. And then it tells you to do this particular one, what you'll need to have as your financial aid offer, uh, private loan offers you might be getting. So it has, it's pretty in depth. This is something that we offer and we just put this up for people who like paper. Uh, this is on our oklahomacollegestart.org website and anybody can go there and find this. Um, this is like a paper version of what we've been talking about and it has broad uh, amounts of, you know, broad things to put things into. But if you like paper, this is something that you could use where you can put in the cost of tuition, the cost of a meal plan, those kind of things. I'll let you do this one. And uh, this is the, the final thing, and, you, and the final part of this steps one, two, and three is that return on investment. Make sure, use those tools Calculate it, write it down, make it specific as you can, change it as you go along, and make sure that the return on investment is there, that the money you've spent makes sense, and that you're not going to go in debt, the student's not going to go in debt in a way that they can't repay, not borrowing more than that first year, year salary. And um, over time, what you've put into it up front makes it worth it in the end. That's the bottom line that prevents the student loan problems. It makes sure that you're, you're not one of the people who say, well, I got a college degree and I can't do anything with it. I can't get a job with it, et cetera, et cetera. This work up front will, should take care of that, that, that you do make it worthwhile. And it's something that you, that was worth the investment for the entire family, because this is, you know, something an entire family has to do. And if you have more than one child, yeah, these uh, special populations, you might do those pretty quickly. So, cause it's, okay. Um, we put in here special populations, especially for counselors, or if you've got a student with disability, a student who's an athlete, um, uh, Native American, those kinds of things that these might help you. And the links in here are really helpful. and. Uh, if you if you are in one of these groups or have a student in one of these groups, you can click on them to learn more. 
uh, the how to pay for college book does have specific information on specific uh, groups of students. Uh, if parents were in the National Guard or they were military veterans, there are monies available that's, that are just not the you know GI Bill. There's other things uh, that you can look at. Uh, law enforcement, if law, they were uh, killed in action, uh, military killed in action, they take uh, Arkansas takes care of the tuition for those students. And I don't I think that's tuition is it. Um, and we have all of those are clickable links uh, that will take you different places for military foster care. If you're working with foster care youth, these are the places you could go find help for students and transition services. They do have a transition services and a mentor for students who are in transition. Um, I, uh, those are the FAFSA things. Do you want to talk about those? Uh, um, most of the counselors probably know this, but if your student was in foster care, they will be an independent student, which allows them to get more money on the FAFSA. They will, if you're an independent student, that means your parents not helping you. So, uh, and there's some questions that go along with this. And this is one of the uh, charts that can say, this is where this student is in the uh, homeless and unaccompanied Jews, uh, where they are on the system and where they might have to provide some documentation to show that that's what they were and when oh, they get to Arkansas college. Arkansas had some really good scholarships for uh, anyone 21 or younger who had uh, children. Uh, so if you have high school students who have children, uh, they didn't have specifically scholarships for homeless and unaccompanied youth, but they had the the uh, uh, scholarships for those students who had children, uh, which I it, it was it was dissimilar to Oklahoma's, but I was glad to see that. Um, and just a reminder on the FAFSA that even now, even if you have a ninth grader, you can go do the FAFSA estimator. Now you can go see what your student might get. Uh, on as a uh, help with grants. And if you just type grant. in FAFSA estimator, it will take you to that page. And it says it takes five minutes. It really only takes a couple of minutes and it'll give you a estimate of what you might be uh, getting. If you have kids who are athletes who are planning on going to an NAI school, a community college, NCAA, and you need more information about what they should be doing and the only thing that usually counselors and coaches will take care of this, but if they're going to a private school, I have seen private school kids get in big trouble because the, the administrators didn't know a lot about um, athletics and they messed the kids up and they weren't able to uh, compete their first year in college. So uh, students with disabilities, uh, they're, most of the counselors are aware of these. Uh, there are scholarship applications uh, uh, for students with disabilities to get extra help. And there are special programs in Arkansas, either uh, students who couldn't, can't do um, uh, a college coursework as it's presented to all students. There are some options to go in the summer, have a college experience, and they have um, scholarships for those. Um, the University of the Ozarks, I actually designed the program at St. Gregory's that I directed. Um, called the Partners in Learning Program after the Jones Learning Center. I went and visited there and uh, took all, borrowed, stole all of their stuff and did it at St. Gregory's. It was one of the first of its kind in the nation whenever I did that 25, 30 years ago. Work while you learn. This is a great one to think about, and I don't, I don't want to miss this one. We have students now in high school who take jobs with companies because they know that company is going to help them pay for they're going to work at Starbucks, at Walmart, at McDonald's. And uh, I have a link for um, uh, 79 companies who will help pay for college. And some of this is after you finish, they'll help pay for it. But some of it is why you're going. Um, and of course, there's um, AmeriCorps, et cetera. But uh, this, is an, uh, this is an up and coming thing. Uh, Oklahoma has a whole website devoted to companies in Oklahoma who will help pay for college. It's not a bad idea to find a job when you do that research. Oh, I want to be a journalist. Maybe one of the journal, maybe one of the newspapers will help pay for college if you start working there. I would, I would check it out. Okay. 
Okay, the last uh, part of this is now that you've put all this information together is making your final decisions and kind of finishing things out. So you're going to use your research, your calculations, the data that you have to make an informed decision and then start taking action. And so you can answer, start answering these questions. You know, what schools can I afford and what for the degree or skill that I want? Um, you know, do I need to go to a four year, a two year, a tech college? Do I need to work for a year? So start putting all that information together. Um, start going on college and school visits. I've taken a whole, all my daughters on school visits and I thought they were definitely going to go. My daughters played basketball. So one of them was getting college basketball scholarships and she would visit, which she didn't get a full scholarship anywhere, but we would go visit colleges and we would leave and she'd say, I'm definitely not going there. I'm not going there. And when she found the college that she liked, she'd go, oh, I just love it there. I just love it. That's where I'm going. So sometimes a college visit can kind of turn that key and they can say, oh, that's definitely not what I thought it was. You know, may meet a couple of students and walk around. So college visits are good. Uh, looking at the available scholarships at the colleges you're going to. And that's one thing that I'll mention here in a minute is uh, filling out for scholarships, because that's what I do in Oklahoma for the Oklahoma State uh, Regents for Higher mm -hmm. Education is I work with a, a, a You Can Go To and we do scholarships and there are tons of scholarships out there that kids can apply for that people don't. I get emails from companies and small little $500 scholarship people that say, hey, can you advertise this for us? Which means we haven't had people fill out applications for this scholarship. That's what that means. Um, one of the things that I want to focus on is completing that free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA. Even if you don't think you're going to be eligible for grant money, like a Pell Grant, where it's money you don't have to pay back, if you get a student loan, you have to fill out the FAFSA. Whether you get a subsidized or unsubsidized loan, you have to fill out the FAFSA. If you're an athlete, I didn't coach anywhere at a college or know any place where they did the college, the coach in the athletic department is going to make you fill out the FAFSA. Whether you're getting a full scholarship or no money, they're going to say, and they're just going to keep bugging you and sending you emails till you fill out the FAFSA. So fill out the FAFSA. And if you get a scholarship from the college, if they give every incoming freshman $500, which I think Oklahoma does, uh, you got to fill out the FAFSA or they won't give it to you. Um, you'll start filling out those college applications, recommendation letters, getting those from uh, people that you know because you're going to need them. Uh, if your uh, student is going to uh, be a doctor, they start off with a big essay when you start entering in the college. And my daughter has worked on her philosophy of uh, med medicine the whole time, even now when she's called Dr. Walk she will make a final adjustment to that essay of her philosophy and it changes. They have to do something to it every year. I suggest whenever your students write those uh, essays for scholarships or for applications is to save it and then you can reuse them over and over again. And have um, somebody professional look at them with you right? uh, if you can. The content, yeah, I had the journalism, the head of journalism at the University of Oklahoma look over Randy's and adjust it. It looked a thousand times better after she wrote it from what she, from what my daughter had written. Um, have your students, you know, if they need to start getting summer jobs and putting that money away, start doing that. And just an FYI, I meet with ninth graders and I ask them, have you started saving money for after high school? No matter if you plan on going to work the first day. I tell juniors, I tell, I tell all of them, the best thing you can do is have money in your pocket that is yours. That you have saved so that you're prepared to do. There is nothing worse than walking on a college campus and not having a dollar in your pocket that's yours. Nothing. It, you will have so much more confidence, and I tell them this, and you can make money. There's no reason you can't make money. I've seen millionaires who are ninth graders now. They can do it. You can make a little money. So start saving it. And the, I would recommend emergency savings for any student after and um, a regular savings for them. And these are the uh, links to 
fulfilling, you know, getting through some of those strategies of filling out uh, applications, etc. cetera. Uh, I put this on here. I'm sure you guys know about these scholarships in Arkansas, but that uh, Arkansas Division of Higher Education actually has a search where you can search for, for colleges that provide these scholarships, which I thought was cool. I've got some app, uh, links to find scholarships. Uh, and and they start writing when you're in eighth grade yeah. middle school. There are scholarships for middle school students. And um, when you're filling out those, uh, there's, there's scholarships for everything. I have a scholarship that I put in a few uh, months ago for a guy, I think in Michigan, who has a Mustang rebuilding shop. And he's giving a $500 scholarship to anybody in the United States of America if they write a little essay on why they love Mustangs. I mean, there's a jillion scholarships out there for every reason. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the Arkansas challenge, uh, scholarship. challenge scholarships where you can go search for scholarships. And then these were our five things. And if you have any questions for us afterwards, please feel free to stay around and ask them. We'll be happy to answer. Um, we're in the PDF that we'll offer. We have a link to all of the resources that we listed today um, that you can access. And if you want to send us an email or you have a question, feel free to send them to those addresses. Okay, have any questions? And I'm going to pull up and show you where we're going to put this on our website for you also, where we will put the recording of today. Any questions for the good of the group? I have one. Um, so I know a lot of this is focused on, like, if you're an Arkansas student, you're going to go to school in Arkansas. Um, my daughter is determined she will not go in Central Arkansas, and I actually agree with that. I went several states over for college, and I think for me, that was probably as important as actual college education to go on my own. Mm -hmm. um, so, is that like if we go to these Arkansas sides, is that going to be applicable to her if she's not going to school here? Well, a lot of them you could, it's you pull down the state first. Yes. So, you can look at other states, like okay. what colleges are there, how much they cost, and what degrees they have. And how much they're going to make if she ends up going to work there. Right. And there are websites that have all the colleges in the United States where you can do the same thing. Okay. And is there like a side? Because I know there are certain programs. Well, each college has like their own thing to weigh out the same tuition. But like, is there a central area to go? No. You might try Googling it and see if, if it shows all the states who provide you know, in-state tuition, or if they have an agreement. Well, I was thinking about like overall funding, because I know that um, there's a program, and I can't think of the name of it right now, but a lot of colleges will participate in it. Um, say you're wanting to study marine biology and you live in Oregon, or you're going to have to go to Florida or California, so they'll wait out of state for that. Like, are there other types? Program where we go to find and, in my experience, those are going to be very individual searches by state for what you want. I don't know of a simple repository for that. So you just have to narrow it down to states where you might go and then go see what you can find. I just didn't know there were other, like, I didn't know anything about this program where your college didn't, instead of college didn't offer a certain. Um, that you wanted, you know, then there was programs. So I just didn't know how the other type of programs were out there. Like, My girls did that. They, I had to search. Like, I had my really hard as a master's in respiratory therapy from the University of Texas San Antonio, and we came about that in a very circuitous route. But we first searched. She applied to the University of Arkansas. And then we went there. Um, she her first wish was to be a um, a PA, physician assistant, which is very hard to get into. She applied to eight schools, didn't get into any of them. But University of Texas San Antonio was one of them, and they wrote the 
respiratory therapy department said we have a new master's degree in respiratory therapy we saw that you didn't get into the medical PA program would you like to try this and she was all on board for it and she's happy she did she had a great career making very good money as a master's respiratory therapist you have your master's you make quite a bit more money and it was a very sort of like say took a long time to get there but we first started searching for programs and whether they paid in or out state of tuition and we had to search individually for those i didn't find a place Sometimes you can find that if you get a scholarship, um, I know a young man who went to Texas A&M. He was from out of state. He got a scholarship to Texas A&M, was in their honors program. Once you were admitted to their honors program, you qualified for their in-state tuition. So there are these loophole doors into some of these places um, to get their in-state tuition because they want you in their honors program or what have you. Um, to share with everyone where we're going to put these things, if you go to our website and you go to menu, we're under departments and academic services right at the top. We are secondary schools and we now have a parent university piece there and we are beginning to put these videotaped um, recordings of different events like this so that parents can get them on demand and when you need them and when you have time to listen or when you can drive and, and listen and those sorts of things. So we appreciate all of you coming. Um, Kay and Susan will stay here for a few minutes and answer your questions. We have representatives from BHS and West. If you want to pick anyone's brain, um, we are here to help. We will continue to embed some of these things in Lunch and Learns, but also in their parent-teacher conference nights. On those evenings, our high schools will advertise events for them to drop in. And my next call to these ladies may be for them to do this as PD for our teachers. We want more of our teachers and our high schools to understand these things because they have great relationships with your students and, and they can teach them along the way. So thank you for coming. We're glad to see you and we'll stay and visit with you as long as we need. Have a good day. Thank you, ladies. My wife is actually, she worked. <laughs> She'll be glad to know about it. Do you know anything more?